So let me just start by reminding you of the careers event that's coming up on the 21st of October. You've probably seen this before. This is a, uh, a notice from our uh, careers officer reminding you that on Wednesday, the 21st of October at 2 o'clock, there'll be a careers presentation for all second years and for all penultimate year students. And uh, I hope that as many of you as possible will go along to that. Uh, these careers events are very useful and may give you ideas that you hadn't thought of before about things you might do with your math degree when you've got it. Right, so returning to the module, we were looking at interior points and non-interior points, giving you the definition of them. I pointed out that these non-interior points were non-standard. And we have this non-standard notation, nint of your set. I drew a few pictures of a typical point that's in the interior of a set and a typical point that's in the, well, a typical point that's completely outside the set and therefore is, doesn't count as an interior or an interior point. Um, that doesn't count as nint. To be a point in the interior of S, as I was so informally calling it, a nint point um, you have to be in the set, but not in its interior. So you have to be in the set and sort of at the edge of the set. And so here's a point that might do that role, assuming that that point is actually in the set, which you might not be able to tell from the sketch. But if that point there at the edge of the set is actually in the set, then it counts as a point in uh, Nint of S. So... Again, I remind you that you must be in S to count the point in Nint S. You must be in S, but not in its interior, and then you'll be in the Nint. Okay, so then what we did was we did some negation and I showed you what it meant to be in Nint S. Assuming you're in S, what does it mean to say you're not in the interior? And we went through a standard negation procedure and uh, if you see one of these such that, it's sort of optional. So you never need the such that. Um, a such that could be replaced by a comma if you wanted, or nothing at all. And a comma could also mean, you can also use the English we have after for all you can say we have. So you could say for all r greater than naught we have that it's not true that br of x is contained in S. But you can just use commas if you want. And we went through all that and then we finished with this final version just using norm to say that for all r greater than naught there should be a point which was very close to x within little r of x and yet why not in S. And you have to be able to do that for every little r greater than naught. So as you make little r smaller, it gets harder to find these points. So generally, you'll be looking for a formula for y in terms of little r, and it'll vary as little r varies, to try and exhibit a point like this. And that's what we're doing in the examples that are coming up. So suppose you're working in the real line. Well, in the real line, we know that open balls are just the same as open intervals. Centered on the point, they extend distance to either side um, equal to little r, the radius of the ball. So you get this open interval from a minus r to a plus r. And bearing that in mind, our task in this example 
is to figure out which points, if any, are the interior points and which points, if any, are the non-interior points, which you can do using the notation int and nint. Now, it says with full justification, that means that in this question, working out what the answer is is not good enough. However, knowing what the answer is is very helpful when you're trying to do it rigorously afterwards. So suppose I draw the axis and sketch one of these of these points. So we'll have uh, naught here. It doesn't really matter. Don't really care about naught. We'll have two and we'll have five. Not quite to scale, perhaps. And here's our set S1. Let's do it in a different colour. S1 goes from 2 up to 5 inclusive. So I'll use those square brackets to remind ourselves that uh, there, there's 1. Now we're in a one-dimensional world instead of a two-dimensional world, so you have to rethink what interior means. You can't draw these disks anymore. Disks are now replaced by these open intervals. And you have to try and work out which of these points are interior and which of these points are non-interior. Now what I'll just let you do is I'll let you have a couple of minutes to talk about to yourselves and decide which of these points are the interior points of S1 and which are the non-interior points, but without going for the justification. I'm going to show you full justification for some of it, uh, maybe getting a few hints from the audience in the process. But let me give you a little bit of time to, to work out which are the interior points and which are the non-interior points in S1. Okay, so you've had a little time to think about that. Um, so who can tell me um, which points of S1 are the non-interior points in S1? Anybody uh, willing to tell me? I'm pretty sure that quite a lot of you know, but I know there's a lot of people here. But if anybody... Sorry? Yeah, two and five. So... When you've got nice sets like intervals, you can sort of see where the edges are. And there's where you're going to be looking for the non-interior points. Now, it, but to be a non-interior point of the set, you've got to be a point in the set. So fortunately, 2 and 5 are in the set, so they count. So, so what we can say is that nint of S1 is equal to, it's got just two points in it, so no, that's just two points. That's not an interval anymore. So two and five are the non-interior points in S1. We haven't proved it yet. I'm going to show you how you prove it in a minute. But you can sort of see it. So all the remaining points are interior points. I wish this machine wouldn't do that. Um, all the remaining points are interior points. The remaining points of S1. So the interior of S1 is the open interval from 2 up to 5. So you exclude the endpoints. Now, how do you go about uh, proving that properly? When it says with full justification, so Let's start by proving that 2 is a non-interior point. So to prove that 2 is a non-interior point, let's see what happens if you look at a little interval centred on 2, radius r, 
So that's going between two, from two minus r up to two plus r. So you let r greater than naught. So we'll, to see two is a non-interior point of S1, uh, first note, two is in S1, so you've got a chance. So that's a good start. So first you have to note that two is in S1. <laughs> now you let R greater than zero. And what we've got to do is show that BR of 2 is not a subset of S1. Or in other words, that there exists a Y in R with modulus of Y minus 2 is smaller than R, but uh, Y is not in S1. So you've got to find a point near to 2 that's not in S1. Let's go back to that picture to see where that point can be. Now really we want to blow this up. Let's, uh, let's blow this picture up a little bit, just to make it a bit easier to see what's going on. So we've got two, five, here's your, here's your set S1. I'm making the picture a bit bigger this time. T plus R, T minus R. And I'm supposed to find a point in this ball, which is an interval, but which is not in S1. Now obviously, as I make R smaller, I'm going to have to change which point I find. But all I have to do is show that no matter how small I make R, there's at least one point that's in this open interval, but not in S1. So where do I look for that point? As you can see, it's somewhere. I'm going to look for something over here. And I like to give explicit formulae in these situations. So in terms of little r, who can think of a formula for a point you could choose that would definitely be in that open interval and not in the set S1? Any suggestions? Can anyone think of a formula? Yeah? Okay, 2 minus a third r is very safe, so I'll just, 2 minus r over 3, so you're going about a third of the way to the edge of that, just to be absolutely safe, which is a good idea. And so here is the point, 2 minus r over 3. Definitely bigger than 2 minus r, less than 2, it's definitely in the open interval, it's not in the closed interval, so that is completely convincing. We can take... y equals 2 minus r over 3 uh, to see that uh, that ball, radius r, set on 2, is not a subset of the closed interval 2, 5. And of course, that works for every little r greater than naught, so there's no r small enough to, to, to make two interior, so two is not in the interior. So since we can do this for every r greater than naught,
You have to keep changing Y, but that doesn't matter. Um, we see that 2 is a non-interior point. Remember, that's S1 is, is 2, 5. And the argument for 5 is similar, except you have to use sort of 5 plus R over 3 or something like, or 5 plus R over 2. So the argument for 5 is similar. So that leaves the rest is to prove that all the other points are interior points. So now you've got to prove that all the other points are interior points. So what are the other points? They are the points in the open interval 2, 5. Once you've done that, you've finished, because every point of S1 is either an interior point or a non-interior point in S1. Now we have to do a similar thing. So here we go again, only this time... This time we take a point that's strictly between 2 and 5. So let's take some point in there. Let's call it x. So we start, we want to prove that something's true for all points in the set that are strictly between 2 and 5. So we start with, let x be in 2, 5, with x not equal to 2 and x not equal to 5. So, what have we got? So x is going to be in the open interval 2, 5. That's 2 less than x less than 5. I claim you're in the interior. That means... You now need to find a little open interval round x, which really is entirely in this interval 2, 5. Now, you don't really know where x is. All you know is that x is strictly between 2 and 5. But you don't know whether it's nearer to 2 or whether it's nearer to 5. All you know is it isn't actually at 2 or at 5. And I claim you can find a little bit of distance safely around x so you still don't leave your interval. Yet again, you can find an explicit formula for it. So the claim we want to show that there exists some r greater than naught with the ball centre on x contained in S1 um, which is equal to 2, 5.
And again, R is going to depend on X. The closer X is to the edge, the smaller you've got to take little R to be to make this work. So, again, this time, little r should be a function of x in order to figure out what it's going to be. What can we take little r to be in terms of x? Any suggestions as to how big little r can be? Yeah? Good. So, what you have to do is you look at x minus 2 and 5 minus x, and you have to be care they're your distances to the edge of the set. And you take the minimum of those two quantities, and they're positive numbers. So x minus 2 is positive, 5 minus x is positive. The minimum of those tells you how far you are away from the edge of the set. And that's actually a pretty good rule to what to use. And the only thing that I didn't quite agree with was you said you should be strictly less than that, and you can actually just get away with taking it equal, because you still end up the open, your open it will stay, still stays inside. But on the other hand, what you said was fine. Any R you chose like that would do it. Um, so you need a positive number R. What you can do is you can take R to be the minimum of X minus 2 and 5 minus X, which is a minimum of two positive quantities. And that will do, or you can take anything smaller. And this shows that uh, x is in the interior. Uh, and then x minus r, x plus r really is, because you stay, uh, you've, you've ensured that you didn't get, that you never get as far as 2 or 5 this way if you stay strictly between x minus r and x plus r. So it must be stuck between there. In fact, it's even sort of strictly stuck between there. And so X is in the interior as claimed. Now the uh, let me go back and have a quick look at those other sets. We won't do those in detail. Let me go right up to the sets we're dealing with. S2 then, all of its points are interior points. By a very similar argument, you can prove that everything in S2 is an interior point of S2, and there aren't any non-interior points in S2. S3 has got one non-interior point, not two, because one is in S3 and at the edge, so one is a non-interior point. Four is not in S3, so it doesn't count. So the interiors give you the sort of biggest possible open interval you can fit here, or if it was in several pieces, you might have to put several together. And the non-interior points are the points that are in the set but at the edge. So to summarize what I just said there, The interior of 3, 7 is equal to the whole of 3, 7. All of its points are interior points. And the interior is empty. Whereas for 1, 4, the interior of the half open interval 1, 4, which was including 1 and excluding 4, that's you get the open interval 1, 4, and an interior
is equal to just a single point one. That's a single point. Notice that four is not doesn't count because four is not in S two. So uh, sorry, this is S three, isn't it? Four is not in one four. So it does not count as an int point. <laughs> okay, any questions about those examples? Of course, I didn't prove these. Um, it's, ex and I, it's an exercise to fill in the details for these ones. Any questions about those examples? If you do have any, just let me know. Um, I do find that different people find these concepts harder or easier. I do think that the key is often to sketch the set and to know exactly what the set is. If you can sketch the set, then you can see what's going on. If you sketch the set, you can usually see which points are at the edge. But as we'll see, there are some problems if you're trying to figure out what's going on with the rational numbers or the irrational numbers, where it's very hard to sketch them and see exactly what's going on. Okay, so let's move on. It's harder to sketch these, but I can let you have a little think. See if you can figure out what the interiors and the non-interiors of these are, but this time we won't be justifying them, and I'm going to just write down the answers for you in a bit. Now, so what are these sets? The first one, that's the empty set. The second one is R+. Plus. Then you've got the rational numbers, and then you've got the irrational numbers. And then you've got the whole of R. And it gets a bit harder now because these sets are not so easy to sketch. Well, okay, R plus is all right. R plus is relatively okay. By the time you get to the rationals and the irrationals, it's not at all obvious what's going on. And uh, I'll say a little bit about it in a minute when you've thought about it for a bit. But let me give you a few minutes to think about it and then uh, we'll have some feedback, okay? Okay, you've had a little bit of time to think about this. I'll, uh, I'll tell you the answers to the easy ones and then see what, we've, uh, what we can think about the less easy ones. So the interior points and the non-interior points of the empty set is just the empty set again. The empty set has no points. When this uh, program recovers for me. Oh, it looks like we've got a bad crash here. Okay, I think we've got trouble. Okay, I think we've got a, a complete failure of technology again. I'll just tell you the answer to this one. 
So the uh, empty set has no points. So, of course, the interior and the non-interior points are, again, the empty set. R plus has got exactly one non-interior point, which is a point zero, and the rest of the points are non-interior points. Uh, the rational numbers, Q, um, there are no interior points, so all the points of Q are non-interior points. The same goes for the irrational numbers. There are no interior points, and all of the points are non-interior points. When you go for the real numbers, all of the points are interior points, and the real numbers, set so R, doesn't have any non-interior points. Any uh, questions on what I just said? I'm sorry that I can't write it, but it uh, looks like my machine has crashed. Any questions on, uh, on that example? Yes? Uh, Non-interior points. So, uh, that's right. so neither R, uh, neither Q nor Q complement have got any interior points. And the reason is that to have an interior point in a set, you have to find an open interval that's completely contained in the set. And that's an open interval of real numbers which have to be completely inside the set. Now you take any open interval in the real numbers, and it's got both rational numbers in it and irrational numbers in it. So you take an open interval of real numbers, then it's not just got rational numbers in, so you can't find anything that's interior to the rationals. But also, you take any interval of real numbers, any open interval in the real numbers, then it's going to have some rational numbers in, so it doesn't consist entirely of irrational numbers. And if it doesn't consist entirely of irrational numbers, then that's going to stop you from getting any interior points in the irrational numbers. So both Q and Q complement have got empty interior, and the non-interior points in Q gives you Q, the non-interior points in Q complement gives you Q complement. Okay, uh, any other questions on what we've just been doing? Okay, if not, then given that the machine's crashed, we've probably better call it today.